I think that we have to remember, patients need to remember, their physicians, what is this woman's risk as best we know today, and we include this in the review article as well, um, by a given age. And oftentimes in the past we have reported what is her lifetime risk, which is quite a high number in the case of hereditary disease. If a woman is 30, uh, it's a high number. It might be best to say, what's your risk in 10 years? Because we hope that we will have better options over that period of time. So that's one point to remember. We also want to be sure to tell this woman not just what is your risk of breast cancer, but in fact they can have a contralateral or a second breast cancer. So first breast cancer, second breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and what do we know about the behaviors of these cancers? Again, by mutation type, BRCA1 versus BRCA2. This is a tremendous amount of information to put before an innocent person uh, who's trying to soak all of this in and make sense of it. So I think that this probably doesn't happen in one visit. Um, it, and we really need to find out from that individual how does she prefer to get information uh, and perhaps schedule several visits to take this in one dose at a time, you might say, and really come to the best decision for her. Of course, we'd also like to have better options. We'd like to have a non-surgical option that's as effective as surgery. So prevention continues to be a very important need research-wise. One of the important elements that we emphasized in this review is to look at these gene carriers by the gene that they carry. Uh, most of the time to date, we've lumped BRCA1 and BRCA2 carriers together and talked about their management. In fact, for, we know now that these women develop quite different types of breast cancer. BRCA1 tend to develop high-grade, aggressive, estrogen receptor negative breast cancer where we don't have medical prevention. BRCA2 carriers develop ER positive disease that's much more similar to what happens in the general population where medical prevention is an option. So that's highlighted in this review. One of the important elements that we emphasized in this review is to look at these gene carriers by the gene that they carry. Uh, most of the time to date, we've lumped BRCA1 and BRCA2 carriers together and talked about their management. In fact, from, we know now that these women develop quite different types of breast cancer. BRCA1 tend to develop high-grade, aggressive, estrogen receptor negative breast cancer where we don't have medical prevention. BRCA2 carriers develop ER positive disease that's much more similar to what happens in the general population where medical prevention is an option. So that's highlighted in this review. And these are uh, obviously very impactful procedures that have profound effects on a woman's body. And that area is not as well studied, although it has been studied. Uh, across the board, when women have been asked later, after the procedure, are you satisfied with what you did? Uh, the majority, a significant majority, say yes. Uh, their concern about developing the cancer is considerably reduced, so the stress of that is reduced. Um, most report stable, intimate relationships. Um, there can be some complications from the procedures, but it's usually around the implants for reconstruction of um, after the mastectomy. Uh, but this is an area that needs much more study. How can we help women look at these vastly different options 
and provide them with the best information for that particular individual and how she makes decisions and at the right time. Uh, that we really don't know as much about and we need to know much more.